Dwarf Lab has just now released some new data from the brand new telescope, the Dwarf 3. The Dwarf 3 is the third installment in the Dwarf Lab telescope series, and as we've seen from the specs so far, it's going to be the best of the bunch. Of course, that is to be expected given the fact that with each of these different telescopes, their technology is improving along with their business, giving us even more to look forward to with each new installment. Now, on this data that Dwarf Lab has provided, I've only done some slight editing because it appears that with this data, they've saved it as an auto-stretched file. So I wasn't really able to do as much as I would have liked to do with it to bring out certain details. But I will say that with only 30 seconds some exposures and only 60 exposures, each of these different 30 minute long pictures have impressed me so far. Let's check it out. The first of these different pictures is the Eagle Nebula and it's one of my favorite deep sky objects in the night sky and personally I wish I had more opportunities to shoot it but because of trees in my backyard somewhat facing south I'm not really able to observe it as much as I'd like to with my larger astrophotography mount. Now with the Dwarf 2 since it's extremely portable and the Dwarf 3 it would give me more options to be able to image this deep sky object. So let's take a look at it. As I mentioned, I haven't really done much in regards to editing. Only thing I've really done was bump up the saturation, which something I do have to say I already appreciate about the saturation aspect is the fact that sometimes I remember that with the Dwarf 2, if I would bump up saturation, it would automatically oversaturate all the pixels and I'd end up with blue pixels and green pixels all over the place and it would just make my astrophotography image look really ugly. But it appears that with the improvement of the sensor, Upgrading to the Starvis 2, the coloration has become less sensitive and more accurate, allowing you to get more of the coloration that you'd like. And again, with only this 30 minute long exposure, you can already see some of this exterior hydrogen alpha data, and you're able to get a nice contrast between the background and the deep sky object, which generally you would need more exposure time to do. We know that it's not a super low focal ratio, kind of like the Celestial Origin, which has a 2.2. Uh, this one I'm pretty sure has 4.3. I could be wrong about that. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But for 30 minutes of exposure with only a 35 millimeter wide aperture size, uh, I have to say that it was able to collect a very nice amount of light and give us a very accurate image. As you can see also, it fixed the autofocus function on this telescope because the stars are all pinpoint and nice and round, which is something that if the stars are slightly out of focus uh, due to incorrect autofocusing, then it'll just take away from everything in the image. It'll be harder to process and your deep sky object will not look as clean and crisp as you'd like it to. So I'm really excited to see what else they've done with this telescope. I know that they're coming out with the Milky Way mode. We're gonna be getting a mosaic mode, which is definitely gonna be helpful in the next deep sky object that they also have released data for, the Veil vale Nebula. Now in the Veil Nebula, you can definitely see the difference in the focal length of the Dwarf 3 in comparison to the Dwarf 2. The Dwarf 3, you can't fit the entire Cygnus loop within the field of view, uh, but with the Dwarf 2, you were able to do that, and that's where the mosaic mode comes in handy. With the mosaic mode, we're able to get a higher resolution image with a wider field of view, and that's something I'm really looking forward to using since I have several different deep sky objects that are larger. Um, perhaps I could use my Dwarf 3 to image those while I'm using my larger astrophotography rig on other objects. Again, this nebula can be a difficult one to pull out depending on what kind of telescope that you have. And so for me, seeing that you were able to see a lot of that faint nebulosity there in the background with only 30 minutes of exposure time and 30 second subs, I have to say this is looking really nice. Of course, you can't zoom in and get like great resolution because again, this is a very limited telescope in regards to focal length but if you're able to add on more exposure time and get rid of a lot of that background noise i'm sure you can end up with a really really nice image at the end of the day speaking of which if you're interested in seeing a certain deep sky object taken with this telescope with a longer amount of exposure time please let me know because as soon as my dwarf 3 gets here that's when i'm going to be displaying for everybody to see so that they can really see what the dwarf 3 is able to do when given the maximum amount of exposure Comment down below to tell me which kind of deep sky object you'd like to see in that review video. Up next we have the Andromeda Galaxy. Now I would have been able to do a lot more with this data had it not already been auto stretched uh, as I believe I mentioned previously. But something that I do appreciate is that with certain astrophotography rigs it's hard to get the outer rings of the Andromeda Galaxy to actually stand out against the background. But here with the auto stretch given with the Dwarf 3 telescope 
you already see that contrast between the night sky and the galaxy. You can see some detail in the bands there, which can actually be quite difficult to achieve. If you don't guide your telescope, you generally won't get enough clarity to see some detail in the rings, and they'll just look like sloppy blobs. But even with this untracked, cheaper telescope, we're able to see the rings in there. The core isn't too blown out, and we're still able to see the exterior of the Andromeda Galaxy. Now, I didn't really have to do much to this one. All I did was get rid of the green noise because it had a green tint to it. I pretty much did the same thing to the Veil Nebula. The only difference that I made also there was I just bumped up saturation there a little bit uh, just to bring out more color. But I'm definitely happy with what I'm seeing from the Dwarf 3 so far. Again, each of these are only about 30 minutes of exposure time. And I'm sure that if you were to add more exposure time, you'd be able to get a really nice image with the Dwarf 3 telescope. Now, you can't expect it to have the same quality as perhaps a, a $2,000 telescope like the Red Cat, which is also a wide field refractor telescope. But you have to remember that with this telescope, you're getting a wide field telescope, built-in filters, a go-to mount, and wide field Milky Way imaging, all for the quarter for the price of a telescope like the Vespera Pro. So for me, the Dwarf 3 is still definitely worth the upgrade, and I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments about this telescope. Uh, if you're as excited as I am about it, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and comment to help boost this video in the YouTube algorithm and help support the channel. It will be really appreciated. If you're looking forward to more Dwarf 3 content, please stay tuned and I wish you all clear skies and have a great night.